I can't imagine enduring that as she did for that long. Tadaro was respected, if not feared. He protected me. So just let me go. I'll not say anything. And they said, you, you know, we can't do that. And she, with all her might, hit Colleen in the head and cracked her skull. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. Still on Demise Row after 30 years, meet Krista Gale Pike, the enigmatic psychopath girl whose chilling story continues to captivate as she faces a fate both haunting and unprecedented. Background Krista Gale Pike, born on March 10, 1976, holds the distinction of being an American convicted slayer who, in the post Furman period, gained notoriety as the youngest woman to receive a demise sentence in the U.S. At the age of 20, she was found guilty of the brutal torture slaying of her fellow classmate Colleen Slemmer, a crime she committed when she was just 18 years old. Pike's life was marked by a tumultuous journey. She faced challenges during her school years and eventually dropped out of high school. Seeking a path to improvement, she enrolled in the Job Corps, a government initiative designed to assist economically disadvantaged youth by providing vocational training and essential career skills. Pike pursued these opportunities at the now defunct Job Corps Center located in Knoxville, Tennessee. During this period, Pike's life took a fateful turn. She entered into a relationship with Tatterall Ship, a man a year younger than her. Together, they developed a shared fascination with the occult and the practice of devil worship. This shared interest would later play a significant role in the disturbing events that unfolded. Tadaro was respected, if not feared. He protected me. He, you know, a treasure, something good instead of something to use. I wanted to get her off campus, and I had every intention of fighting her. Crime. In a chilling and tragic incident that unfolded in January 1995, Krista Pike, then a university student, became entangled in a web of jealousy and violence that resulted in the gruesome slaying of her classmate Colleen Slemmer. The motivation behind this heinous act stemmed from Pike's irrational belief that Slemmer was attempting to steal her boyfriend. Despite the friends of Slemmer denying any such intentions, Pike's jealousy spiraled out of control. Collaborating with her friend Shadola Peterson, Pike hatched a sinister plan to lure Slemmer to an isolated and abandoned steam plant near the University of Tennessee campus. On January 12, 1995, the events took a horrific turn as Pike, Peterson, another accomplice named Ship, and Slemmer left their dormitory. They ventured into the woods under the pretense of making peace by offering Slemmer some marijuana. However, upon reaching the secluded location, the situation took a nightmarish turn. Slemmer was subjected to a prolonged and brutal attack. Pike and Ship attacked her while Peterson stood as a lookout. Over the course of 30 agonizing minutes, Slemmer endured taunts, beatings, and slashes, with her attackers displaying a shocking level of brutality. In a disturbingly ritualistic act, a pentagram was carved into her chest. The violence ultimately culminated in Pike smashing Slemmer's skull with a large piece of asphalt, leading to her demise. And I can't imagine enduring that as she did for that long. So just let me go, I'll not say anything. And I said, you, you know, we can't do that. And so she took a large piece of asphalt that was discarded on the side of the road and she, with all her might, hit Colleen in the head and cracked her skull. Pike's audacious audacity afterward showcased the extents of her depravity. She began showing off a piece of Slemmer's skull around the school, leading to swift suspicions. Within a mere 36 hours, all three perpetrators were apprehended. Crucial evidence included a logbook that revealed the departure of Pike, Ship, Peterson, and Slemmer together, with only three returning. Further damning evidence was found as detective discovered the fragment of the skull in Pike's jacket pocket. Additionally, a copy of the Satanic Bible was uncovered in Ship's room. Subsequent investigations revealed that Pike had confessed to the police about the torture and slaying of Slemmer. However, she attempted to downplay her involvement, claiming that they had intended to frighten Slemmer and the situation had spiraled beyond their control. This assertion stood in stark contrast to the disturbingly organized and deliberate nature of the attack, which involved premeditated planning, deception, and an eerie ritualistic element. 
to make sense of the whole thing. And she kept saying, now wait a minute, let's talk about this. Well, Colleen tried to run away and that really infuriated Krista. Her. I knew exactly what I was doing. Trial. In the course of Pike's trial, the prosecution benefited from a combination of incriminating evidence and Pike's own confession. The charges brought against her included first-degree slaying and conspiracy to commit slaying. The trial, which commenced in March 1996, witnessed a swift verdict. After only a brief period of deliberation on March 22, Pike was declared guilty on both charges. The subsequent sentencing, delivered on March 30, pronounced a harrowing fate for Pike. She was condemned to demise by electrocution for the slaying conviction and received an additional 25-year prison term for her involvement in the conspiracy. Tatterall Ship, Pike's co-conspirator, was handed a life sentence, coupled with the possibility of parole, along with a 25-year supplementary sentence. Shadola Peterson, the individual who turned informant, pursued a different legal trajectory. In exchange for his cooperation, he pleaded guilty to being an accessory after the fact and consequently received probation. This marked a stark divergence from the severe punishments meted out to Pike and Ship. Appeals of Conviction In the wake of her conviction, Krista Pike engaged in a series of appeals within the Tennessee state courts, embarking on a tumultuous legal journey. This process saw Pike's oscillating decisions. She initiated, terminated, and then reinitiated an appeal of her conviction, displaying a volatile stance. Notably, in both June 2001 and June 2002, despite counsel advice, Pike expressed her desire to withdraw her appeal and pursue an end through electrocution. This unusual request was granted by criminal court judge Mary Beth Leibowitz, setting an ending date of August 19, 2002. However, Pike swiftly reversed her stance, leading her defense lawyers to file a motion on July 8, 2002 to resume the appeal process. Unfortunately, this motion was dismissed. Nevertheless, on August 2, 2002, a panel of three state appeals court judges ruled in favor of continuing the proceedings, preventing the ending from taking place. Subsequently, in December 2008, Pike's bid for a new trial was denied, reinstating her placement on Demise Row and exhausting her avenues for appeal within the state of Tennessee's legal framework. This marked the conclusion of her permitted appeals based on the state's regulations and procedures. In May 2014, Pike's legal team turned to the federal court system as they entered an appeal. Their goal was to secure a commutation of Pike's demise sentence to life imprisonment, grounded on arguments of inadequate legal representation, Pike's mental health struggles, and the unconstitutionality of capital punishment as applied in Tennessee. U.S. District Judge Harry S. Matisse Jr. issued a comprehensive 61-page ruling on March 11, 2016, rejecting all grounds and denying the requested commutation. Subsequently, on August 22, 2019, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit Panel unanimously upheld the initial ruling, reaffirming the denial of relief following a repeated appeal by Pike's lawyers on October 1, 2018. This protracted legal journey exemplified the complexities and intricacies of the appeals process in the face of capital punishment. Pike's vacillating decisions, combined with the intricate legal arguments put forth, showcase the depth of legal deliberation involved in cases of this nature. Ultimately, these proceedings underscored the rigorous examination undertaken to determine the fate of the demise row inmate. I would have never hurt anybody. He said that I would have the X amount of voted. That is unacceptable, and I realize that, but I don't deserve to die. That God is not going to let my daughter die. Attempted slaying conviction. Convicted slayer Krista Pike faced another legal ordeal on August 24, 2001. Allegedly aided by inmate Natasha Cornett, Pike launched a violent attack on fellow inmate Patricia Jones, attempting to strangle her with a shoestring and nearly succeeding in taking her life. On August 12, 2004, Pike was found guilty of attempted first degree slaying for this attack. The Tennessee Department of Corrections asserted that Cornett played a role but investigators determined there was inadequate evidence to charge her with aiding Pike in the attack against Jones. Attempted Prison Break In March 2012, Krista Pike's involvement in a planned prison escape was uncovered, revealing a new layer to her criminal history. The scheme involved corrections officer Justin Helflin, 
and Donald Kohut from New Jersey. Kohut initiated contact with Pike in early 2011, leading to visits once or twice a month. Kohut devised an escape plan and enlisted Heflin's help for compensation. Security concerns limited details, but the plan involved tracking a prison key's movement to create a duplicate. Early 2012, authorities learned of the plot, launching a joint effort by the Tennessee Department of Corrections, Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, and New Jersey State Police to thwart it. TBI stated the plan was in its infancy and not imminent. Kohut's March 2012 arrest brought bribery and conspiracy charges, while Heflin faced bribery, misconduct, and conspiracy charges. Pike wasn't charged, her level of involvement uncertain. It is therefore ordered that you shall be put to death by an execution in the mother prescribed by law. <laughs> oh, I love you! I love Scheduled ending. On August 27, 2020, the Tennessee Attorney General Herbert Slattery's office formally petitioned the Tennessee Supreme Court to establish an ending date for Krista Pike. However, due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic in Tennessee and various other considerations, Pike's legal team was granted extensions by the court. These extensions provided additional time for her attorneys to present arguments against her ending. Importantly, the state did not contest these extensions. <laughs> Can I please have a mom? Before I go. January 1997, your body shall be subjected to shock by sufficient current of electricity. Subsequently, on June 7, 2021, Pike's legal representatives submitted a motion opposing the designated ending date and urging the issuance of a certificate of commutation. The court is currently deliberating on whether to proceed with Pike's ending or to commute her sentence. Should the decision lean towards ending, Pike would become the first woman to be executed in Tennessee in approximately two centuries. This critical juncture underscores the evolving landscape of capital punishment in the state and the complex legal and ethical considerations at play. That's all for this video, folks. We'll see you next time.